What's up guys, it's me, your badass host, Draven, and welcome to another episode of our Pokemon Alpha Sapphire walkthrough. Okay, so in our last episode, it was the first, well, the first one in a long time. We did a trade episode, and, well, we made a bit of a replacement for our team. As you guys can see, in our last episode, we evolved a Feebas that we caught right here in Alpha Sapphire, and made it into a badass Milotic. This is going to be the first time I'm using this guy right here on my team. And we named it Leviathan. Yes. Oh, yes. Now, this is a very, very special one because, well, as you guys can see, it has Dragon Pulse. It's a very special Pokemon right there. Anywho, the other Pokemon that is on our team is Tropicana. As you guys can see, it is both a flying and grass type Pokemon. This guy right here... He, you know, I've always wanted to use a Tropius for a long, long time. I just don't know how or when it would have happened. And it does have the, like, dual, dual, it is a dual type Pokemon right here. Now, that doesn't mean that we're done switching out Pokemon right here. We might be switching out maybe two more just in case we go into the Pokemon League. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to be exploring the rest of, uh, let's see. We're still on the internet right here. We're going to be exploring the rest of our routes, which is Route 119. So if you guys are looking into trying to capture a Feebas, which, uh, <laughs> shame on me, I failed to teach this guy a very good move. Um, go to the last episode, and right there and then, you're going to learn how to capture a Feebas and then how to evolve it. Hopefully that will go well, I guess. I don't know. We shall see, and then you guys will see a battle of um, a battle of a secret base right here. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a repel because there are things that I kind of want to show you around here. Something hidden. Well, there is something hidden right here that you can actually find. And uh, let's see, if we go right here, you'll be able to find yourself. Let's see. There we go. We found ourselves in Ultra Ball. And the other part that we can actually find, it's not just the Ultra Ball, but you can find a secret base around here too. But you'll be able to find yourself a, an elemental stone around here if we can just grab it. And we're not going to make that into a secret base. Now, cool thing is this, guys. Um, you can make your secret base wherever you can. And in this generation, they expanded the amount of secret base spots that you can actually find. So... Well, I can't wait to I can't wait to start making my own little secret base. You know, the little starter one is not really enough. Now, here we found ourselves a leaf stone. That is very important because well, you could use that to evolve uh, different kinds of Pokemon. So, let's go ahead and move on with the next part of our little adventure, and that is visiting Fortree. And well, before we do that, let's go ahead and go in here. Now, two episodes ago, you guys have seen me battle somebody in their own secret base. And, well, this one right here is... We're going to be grabbing another, another flag. Now we have to find the gym leader himself or the secret base guy. Now, remember, these guys are capable of mega evolving their Pokemon, which is ridiculous. So, what we're going to start off with is... You know what? We're going to start off with a good old Sableye. Hi, I'm Eric. You having fun? Please take this as a little thank you. And yes, we got ourselves a low C-note mat. So, remember guys, if you meet the, the owner of the base, they will give you something secret. And then, from there, they're going to want to battle you in whatever format they want. So, here we are, taking on secret base trainer Eric. And he is coming out with a Happini right here. Now, Happini doesn't look like much, but I have a feeling this guy is going to do something very messed up for me. So, let's go with a Metal Burst, since we do have a... Oh, crap, Baskets. Okay, so we are confused, and that, that move is not going to work. And... Well, I don't know if that counts as, you know, hurting yourself. So, let's see. Let's go with a Power Gem. Now, even though we are... Even though we are the fastest Pokemon here, our stall ability will always make us go second. So here comes a Power Gym attack. And that right there doesn't do much. So let's go ahead and switch out to Tommy JDF. And uh, see what happens right here. So let's go. 
Tommy JDF. Here we are. And here comes a copycat attack. And... Okay, so... It's using Power Gem, which was the last move, and that doesn't affect as much. So, here we go. Blaze. Nope, let's go with a Double Kick, because I guess this Pokemon is still... What? Yes, it's still a normal-type Pokemon, and yes, we have defeated you. Alrighty. Okay, that's how you do it. Alrighty. And, well, let's see. He's coming out... She... Or he's coming out with a Sea Leo. Let's go with Thunderball. And hopefully this one will work out if, for, for the best or something like that. Now, Thunderball right here is another first-time Pokemon that I'm using. I'm extremely proud of it. So here we go. Charge Beam. Let's get it. And this guy avoids it? Holy crud. And, yes, we're going to get hit by Hail. Now, remember, guys, whenever you're facing a, a uh, what was it, a secret base trainer... They will be very unpredictable in the sense that, well, they'll have different kinds of Pokemon. They will fill up your Pokedex. You will get experience points, but the other part, too, they will have different kinds of abilities. Messed up abilities. Hell, you'll even have Pokemon with, uh, well, you'll even have Pokemon with, yeah, with Mega Stone. So you, 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 you need to keep an eye out for that. So there it is. We got ourselves Shadow Ball. And, yes, we're getting hit by Hail. And he's going to be coming out with a Grimer. So, let's go with Guy of the Fierce Knight. Let's go. Let's get it. It's time. And, well, right here, Grimer is looking like Grimer. So, let's go with a, uh, psych a Psychic Attack. Alrighty, okay. And, well, just like that, guys... Just like that, we have defeated our good old buddy, Trainer Eric, right here. So, that right there gives us a few points. And thankfully, our Pokemon are going to be healed up afterwards. So, we don't need to do anything else. But you can train against these people. You can battle every single time. And you're never going to run out. You're never going to run out of different trainers right here. So, what we're going to do is we're finally going to go into, into Fortree City and... Man, does it feel good to have a Milotic. I've always wanted to use Milotic for a long, long time. Like, super long time. And, well, let's see. Let's go right here. We're not going to get attacked. Well, we don't want to get attacked by any Pokemon. But we're going to be walking straight to the next part right here. Into Route 19. Going into, you know, Fortree. And, yes, you'll definitely find a Pokemon trainer right here. And, well... It is time. It's time. It's time to take on Yasu, and he is coming out with, you know, a ninjask. All right, Shadow Eye. Time to do it. I wonder if Rock-type moves will actually work right here. Okay. Time to see if the Rock-type moves work. And Screech Attack is going to hit us pretty hard. So here we go. Rock-type attack. That was effective, and yes... That is how you do it. Alrighty. Okay. And, well, it looks like... It looks like Sableye is actually doing pretty good right here. May have picked the right Pokemon for this job right now. Alrighty. So, let's see. There is another secret base right here that is wide open. So, let's go ahead and get some Pomeg Berries before we, you know, delve into a Pokemon trainer. A potentially strong trainer. Now, the funny thing is, guys... I've actually battled trainers with uh, with Kirim White and Kirim Black. If any of you guys know the way to get those two Pokemon, and if it's still possible, please comment down below. And here we are in another another base where I can't pronounce the name or anything. So please comment down below if you are of uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. And this guy is a dick. Okay. Okay, so we have to go through a gauntlet right here. And, yeah, sometimes when you're going through these secret bases, these people can be absolute menaces. And, well, here we have, or we found the next trainer. And, well, we're going to be battling him. I've already battled against a, a person with a, uh, with a Mewtwo. Hell, I've even found a, a person with a shiny Mewtwo. And, oh, my God, that's not good. That is not good. Okay, so I know where this is going. And that is going to turn into a Mega Salamence. So we're going to have to go with a Power Gem. 
And, okay, so Dragon Claw is going to hit us pretty hard. We probably should have gone with the metal. And... Okay, so... It looks like we're going to lose this one right here. So here comes a Dragon Claw yet again. And... Oh, nearly survives. Okay. Okay, so let's not panic here. We're going to go straight to Gaia, the Fierce Knight. If all else fails, yes, we got this Pokemon right here because we got a Fairy type. And I'm now starting to remember that, yeah, Fairy types are better than Dragon types. And that does not affect us. But, yes, here comes the Dazzling Gleam. And that destroys Salamence. So, okay. <laughs> Alrighty, so that right there gives us more points. Tommy JDF, nearly at level 50. Leviathan, level 26. And here comes Latios. And, well, we're going to keep it right here with Gaia. And, well, Dazzling Gleam looks like it's the thing to do. And, well, would you look at that. Latios Mega Evolves, and this one is going to be... Okay, so that one was super powerful, and we survived somehow. So here comes Dazzling Gleam, super effective, and that's how you take care of business. I'm throwing out the peace sign, guys. Throwing it out, and yes, Gaia the Fierce Knight grows to level 43. So do you guys not see how easy it is to now get levels? And Thunderball is learning Explosion, which, yeah, I'm not going to do right here. Not a big believer of that, but still. And no surprise, I hate to admit it, but you're pretty strong. Yes, I am. Okay, so we don't need anything else. Again, comment down below on if you guys know what that means, the, the name and everything. Shout out to the person that, you know, apparently appeared on my stuff right here. And, well, finally, we are here in Fortree City. And, well... Fortree City is a very, very, very simple place. It's made of trees. There's a lot of trees. And uh, we're going to visit every single one of these uh, these these trees right here. And, well, this is... Uh, she has a Spinda. She wants one for a Skitty. I think I have a Spinda. Or... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I haven't captured any of these Pokemon after, you know, for a while. But I will be trading and all that crud. And if you talk to this person... Yeah, okay, so trading the memories and all that stuff, that actually does work, and uh, don't forget the experience boost. So, if we go right here, if you talk to this lady, she's going to be like, People of Pokemon, their hidden powers are awakened by living natural environments. Let this old woman see if your hidden power has awakened, and I hold a coin in my hand. Let's go with the right hand, yes, and again, and one more time, she's going to go with the left. Let's see. And just like that, we get ourselves the HM10, which is Hidden Power. Very good move, depending on, yeah, the mathematics. And I'm just a powerless old lady, but I can tell you the type of Hidden Power your Pokemon would have, if you like. And so if you, let's just say, if you pick Leviathan, my Leviathan, this guy will be a Water Type, what the hell? A Water Type a Hidden Power, that's kind of weird. Okay, so what if we go with Shadow Eye right here? And this guy has a Dragon type. So you can always go up to this lady to actually, you know, to find out what exactly it is. That way you can use the hidden power properly because not a lot of people use it properly here. And, well, what's that thing you have there? Oh, it's the Pokedex. It's really awesome. Pretty cool. And huh, seeing your Pokedex just reminded me of something. I met the trainer, Steven, when he when I was re uh, when I was researching rare stones, who boy, he had amazing Pokémon with him. They weren't just rare, they were trained to terrifying extremes. He might even be stronger than a gym leader in this town, which is true. And the funny thing is, guys, if I had my way, yeah, I would have been using what's his face, uh Metagross. Now, this guy right here is sniffing me. He's like, "Oh, you smidge. Were you at a volcano or something?" Yes, I was. So, if we're in here, who does this person... Okay, being together with Pokemon. Okay, cool. If you talk to this person, there, go bird Pokemon. And you will eventually see that Pokemon back at Moss Deep. So, we go in there, and... As you already know, Steven Stone is right there. He's going to be like, hmm. It looks as though Pokemon can be found up at Route 120. Yes, him in his signature pose. Okay. 
So before we go and do anything with that guy, let's go right here. And this right here is of big significance because if you come in here, bam. Oh yeah, we've seen this guy before. Ooh, Draven, I knew we'd meet again. What, you don't know where you are? This is a secret base guild, of course. Huh? What do you mean you never ask? Oh, you. No need to be shy, my boy. The secret build or the secret base guild is here to fully support everyone so they can uh, have a secret base life full of adventures. We can give you hints on how to enjoy your secret base and items and you can't get anywhere else. And best of all, coming here means that you can always meet me anytime you want. Hmm, okay. You know, Draven, that reminds me. You still haven't made your a, yourself a team, have you? See, a team is made up of, well, like, pals that hang out in your secret base uh, that you made. I guess you can call them friends, but that doesn't mean team or sound cooler. When you meet people in other bases, you can ask them to join your team. Nothing wrong with playing alone, of course, uh, but having some pals around you sure can liven things up in your base. If you haven't tried it yet, I think you ought to give it a shot before you write it off. Oh yeah, you've been collecting flags too, little pal. Here. Here at the Secret Base Guild, we assign ranks to all uh, all the teams based on how many flags they've managed to get. See, the more secret bases you find and the more flags you snag, the higher in it, the higher you and the tier team will end up in the rankings. Huh? You want to know why we do that? Ain't it obvious? It's more fun that way. A bit a bit of rivalry gets everybody fired up, and it doesn't it seem to feel full of adventure to be on an endless hunt for more flags. The higher the rank, uh, the higher your rank gets, the richer your base life will become. You'll see. So go out there and find flags, and uh, then bring them here to show me. So let me give you a gift for my fellow base fanatic for coming uh, so far to see me here. And here we get ourselves a proclamation. A proclamation will let you set the base battle format that will fly in your own base. There are lots of decorations with special and cool effects like that. Whenever you get a bit of new swag for your digs, check it out and see what it does. And enjoy the base life. Okay. And, well, these people sell pretty good stuff. As you guys can tell, you got a fence, a Makarwa, uh, tall grass, a gym statue, a whole bunch of stuff that you can actually design your, 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 your secret base right here. And, well, if you go to the desk, you can find a lot of desks. And we've already gotten quite a few desks and all that stuff. So, let's see. Talk to this lady and Azuro dolls. If you guys already know, we got a tent from the from the uh, what's his face. We got a tent from uh, the Trick Master, so that right there is gonna be a pretty good uh, addition to our secret base. And well, if you talk to this guy, yes, okay. So that is pretty much it right there for this guy. Eventually, we will be doing some secret base stuff, collecting more flags and all that. I remember, I got up to a hundred and didn't seem to care afterwards so yeah <laughs> all right so if we go right here you talk to this guy he's gonna be like Pokemon and people have adapted to nature to survive there's no need to make nature conform the way we want to live okay and if you talk to her climbing up and down uh, up and down living here and take it to hell hey why don't you use this to stay in shape too and here we get ourselves some stairs this right here will be used for the secret base if you have two floors so tree houses for, for tree are great I think it's the number one town for living together with Pokemon pretty good pretty good stuff okay so let's go right ahead and see what what's his face is doing well let's see what he's doing and um, or yeah yeah what's his face um I can't remember his name oh yeah Steven Stone let's see what he's doing now he went this way and I do need a Pokemon with Cut eventually. Because there are some areas right here where you, you're going to need Cut. So, let's see. I want to try something out right here. We have Tropicana. Let's go ahead and use them. And see what this Pokemon trainer is all about. Why am I carrying a Parasol? I'll let you know if you win against me. Okay. Let's go. So here we are, taking on Parasol Lady Clarissa, and she's going to be coming out with her Goldeen, and well, it's our first battle with Tropicana. Let's go with Leaf Tornado right here. And that just messes up with Goldina. 
Oh, yes. Okay, alrighty. So we're doing some stuff right here. We're almost gaining some levels. And here comes the Sea King. Let's go ahead and continue it on. And again, I'm going to keep on asking the question. Every single time we see a, a female Sea King. If a female Sea King is a female, shouldn't it be called a Sea Queen? Comment down below, guys. And wow, that waterfall just messes up. Okay, so here we go. Leaf Tornado yet again. And there we go, Sea King or Sea Queen has been defeated. Okay, and uh, well, just like that, we get ourselves to level 34. And well, Parasol Lady Clarissa defeated. Okay, so let's go right ahead and continue on our little adventure right here. Now you can find a, you can you can find quite a few rare Pokemon right here, and well. Let's go ahead and see what kind of rare Pokemon we can find first off the bat. And bam! For the first time ever, we run into a horde of Oddish. So for for those who don't know, a horde is a group of five. And uh, well, they're usually lower leveled and all that stuff. But that actually increases the chances of you, you know, finding a shiny Pokemon or something like that. And uh, the indication is, you know how long the screen gets and as you guys can see we found ourselves another horde and this right here is a horde of Merrells which we've already caught and uh, yeah it's letting me go away now you can defeat these hordes with uh, multiple attackers and all that stuff so let's see I do remember this guy having uh, grass or what was it called a uh, flying type so Let's go right ahead and use Shadow Eye. That way it can get to level 40. And, well, let's go right ahead and do this. And there we go. Alrighty, let's go. Let's get this. So, here it is, taking on Bird Keeper Robber. And he is coming out with his, yes, his, uh, whatchamacallit, his Swablu. Alright, Shadow Eye, let's get this. Power Jam. And this power gem is going to have to work because right here, cotton whatever, using that, and there we go. Now, in my Omega Ruby, I, I use, I'm using an Alteria, and I'm using both cotton whatever it's called and then, you know, Feather Dance just to have, like, what was it called? A, you know, a double, what was it called? A double effect on attacks and all that stuff. And, well, it looks like to me we're getting challenged by somebody. Yeah, I am not going to battle on screen because I do not want to get embarrassed. So, once we get over to the bridge right here, guys, you're going to notice Steven Stone is right here. And he's like, hmm. Draven, so we meet again. How was it? Uh, how, how has it been? Have you been using the Mega Stone wisely? I suppose I needn't even ask, though not it, not when it comes to you and your Pokemon team. I wonder, have you ever noticed, hmm, there's something to hear you can't see. Now, if we were to use this device on the in invisible obstacle, hmm, no, no, rather than describing it, I should just show you. That should be more entertaining. Draven. Are you and your Pokemon ready for battle? Sure, let's go right ahead and do that. And we're going to be taking on this guy right here. So, we're putting on these lenses, the Devon Scope. And from there, we're going to identify a hidden Pokemon. And that right there is a Kecleon. Okay. A hidden Kecleon. And we've already run into so many of these Pokemon right here, okay? And... We're going to go with a Metal Burst. This guy is going to go with an Ancient Power. As you guys can see, we get hit with a critical hit. And because of that, bam, Metal Burst. And now, Kecleon is a Steel-type Pokemon. So, let's go with a Shadow Ball. I, oh, yeah, Shadow Ball. Yeah, Ghost-type moves don't really work. And what is it doing? And it transforms into a Grass-type. And because of that... This works, and that right there transforms it into a ghost type. But you know what? Let's go ahead and capture this Pokemon. Just add it to the collection. So here we go, Nest Ball. Let's get it. Okay, come on. Get in the ball. 
Damn you. Okay, so these Pokemon do not like being captured. And, well, since Kecleon is officially a, um, what was it called? It's officially a ghost-type Pokemon. It, Slash doesn't really work on, on ghost-type. So let's go with a Luxury Ball. Again, I like to capture Pokemon with different Pokeballs and all that crud. Doesn't matter what it is. And, uh, well, there it is. Got ourselves a Kecleon. And that will feed our Pokemon just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and take a look at its, uh... Let's go ahead and take a look at what this has. So here is Kecleon, the color swap Pokemon. This is a female. Kecleon alters its body coloration to bend or to blend in with its surroundings, allowing it to sneak up on prey on notice or on its prey on notice. Then it lashes out with its long, stretchy tongue to instantly ensnare the unsuspecting target. That right there is a scary thought. So we caught Kecleon, and well, as you guys can see right here, Steven's like just as expected. That's called a Devon Scope. It's a fantastic piece of tech that lets you see Pokemon in hiding. Consider it a gift from me. Take it. So there it is. We got ourselves a Devon Scope. But that's not all, guys. One more thing. From here, depending on what Pokemon you, you started with, you will be getting their Elemental or their Mega Stone. In this case, we got ourselves a Blaziken Knight. You will be seeing this in another channel, too, and all that stuff, and yeah. <laughs> and the stone ranks as one of my top five favorite stones in existence. I have no doubt that you and your Pokemon will take it. You know, Draven, I like to see trainers and the Pokemon who are trying their best. That's why I like you so much. Hmm. It seems as though something just shown from, for a moment in your bag. I'm sure I sense the power of some kind of stone. A meteorite? No, it couldn't be. Let, let's meet again. And just like that, he has left. So, that right there is the conclusion to this episode right here, guys. That's all we needed to do. We don't need to level up our Pokemon, but there is a Pokemon right here waiting for us. Let's go right ahead and use Tommy JDF and just to kick some butt and take some names right here. So, yes, something is in our way. Let's go ahead and see what it's all about. And bam, there is, there is a Kecleon, and it's a well, it's angry at us for you know capturing its best friends and all that stuff. So, yeah, here we go, Tommy JDF. Time to finish this Pokemon off. Go with a double kick attack right here, and well, just like that, we are victorious. And well, there is an item right here that we need to grab. Here we go, and we found ourselves a nest ball, which, well, we've already gotten quite a few of. And now, before we do anything, I kind of want to—I want to try something right here. There might be a Pokemon or an item right here. Nope, there is something right here of of importance. If you go in here, guys, this is the Scorch Slab. You'll come in here, grab this, and you'll find yourself the Sunny Day ability or the Sunny Day. A technique. The other thing too they added on to this game is that there is an entrance way and from there you will be able to find yourself a legendary Pokemon. Now we we're not going to do anything here just yet because we're saving that for well when the time comes. So we're going to be moving out of here. Milotic. I cannot believe I still have. I cannot believe I have a Milotic on my team. Good gravy. Okay so let's get the heck out of here and well, we got one more thing to do, and that is, well, figure out what is in the way of the Fortree City Gym. There is something right there, and I heard the noise. Guys, you're going to love this. And that is a freaking gloom. Never mind. Okay, so I thought it was something else. Leave me alone. <laughs> Alrighty. It's time. To go to Fortree City and, uh, you know, expel whatever it is that's blocking our way right here. So, we're going to go down here. And this is the easiest way to get to the gym. Now, there is one little issue. There's something blocking the way. But now that you got the Devon Scope, this will, you know, trigger this. And 
yes, this guy will flee. Does no, it doesn't want the smoke. And well, there is one little thing that we need to grab before everything ends, and that is right here. We're gonna find ourselves the TM90 or 86 Grass Knot, which you know is weight based and is a very very good move for any kind of grass type Pokemon. So. Stay tuned, guys. In the next episode, we are going to be going into our sixth gym battle. Finally, after a long time coming, we're finally battling for a gym badge. And, uh, well, who knows? We might, be, we might be seeing a mega evolution there somewhere. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank you guys again for being supportive, as always. I'll be back for another episode of our Pokemon Alpha Sapphire walkthrough. I almost said that. Yeah. See you guys.